Hmm. Disney has announced that they are going to be making a prequel movie for Tangled about Mother Gothel. Wait a minute. She literally kidnapped a child. No, don't make me feel bad for her. The reason we like villains in fiction is because they're bad. Not everybody needs to be redeemable. Not everybody needs a redemption arc. We don't need to feel bad for everyone. If I wanted to go feel bad for a murderer, I would have went and watched the freaking idea of investigation discovery channel, okay? Disney villain movies feel like fan fiction. That's literally what it feels like when I watch these films. They for those of you who have seen Corella. Jasper and Artie are the best characters. I don't care. Do not try to argue with me. They are the best characters. Hey y'all, it's Hariana and I'm back with another video. Welcome to or welcome back to the pirate ship. Harry Hook's pirate ship. Always remember that I am the captain. You are not my first mate. I have no first mate. No one's worthy of being the first mate. Hello, if you're new here, my name is Hariana and I'm a hot freaking mess. And I like to make content based off nostalgia and family and children's entertainment and all the issues that I find within those spaces. Today we are going to be talking about the new Corella movie. And here's just a quick disc disclaimer because I know my comment section is just going to be filled with this mess. I'm not here to shit on this movie. I really did enjoy this movie as I did enjoy the other two Maleficent's movies also. I don't go out of my way to hate things. It just takes way too much energy to hate things. If I'm gonna sit here and watch something, I'm gonna find something about it that I enjoy. Are these movies the best things ever created? No, but are they enjoyable? Of course. And that's just the point of a lot of like live action Disney movies at this point. They're not trying to be all deep and whatever with their animated films because it's always been so obvious that Disney puts way more effort into the animated films than the live action ones but we're gonna get into that like I said these are cash grabs but they're fun cash grabs okay and I don't care and they're gonna keep making them because people like me keep going to see them because I like to have a good time at the movies I don't care I've been sad by the way I was sad because it rained today and I couldn't do the fishbowl thing so don't hop on me don't hop on me by the way, if you're really into like fashion films and whatnot, this is a great movie for you. I have my mouse right here, so I don't have to have my laptop all the way up in my face looking down all the time. So it is going to be a lot easier from this point on. I'm so happy. So if you see me looking like this so often, it's because I'm looking at my laptop. Now, before I get into today's video, you know, I always do my self-promotion because I sponsor my freaking self. Don't nobody be here for me. I have a few sponsorships here and there, but... I promote myself. New merch is available. You guys have been asking me and talking about me getting new merch and adding new stuff to the website and whatnot. I've added hats. I've added shirts. Homemade shirts, by the way. If you get a shirt, no, I made that myself. It's like a gift from me to my subs. Homemade nail polishes, homemade lip glosses, keychains, so much cute freaking stuff. Head on over to harryonahook.com. That is my shop's website. Follow my shop on Instagram. By the way, y'all, I will be doing a giveaway for my my store when I hit 10k on my Instagram at Hariana so please go check that out next I have patreon please support if you can consider it please and I have a web shelf link down below now let's get back into today's subject matter today we are going to be talking about the Sun not the son, the mother of Carlos DeVille, Corella DeVille and her movie. And it's not really a lot of her movie, but it plays a big part into why I wanted to just make this video. Now, big disclaimer, this video contains Corella spoilers. So if you don't want the movie Corella spoiled for you and you want to go see it, don't watch this video. No, I'm sorry. By the way, if you 
have not seen Maleficent or Maleficent Mistress of Evil, don't watch this video either. Big, big spoilers. Now, let's go ahead and get into it. And also, this is another trigger warning for anybody. This video contains the subjects of sexual assault and murder. So, viewer discretion is advised because those two things are two of the most tragic things that can happen to a person. Anyway, let's continue. Let's continue. Like I said, as we keep going to see these Disney villain movies, Disney is going to continue to keep making them. Like I said, we have three so far. We have two Maleficent movies and one Corella movie. Disney, if I'm not gonna lie, if I legit will go see another Corella movie if it's another fashion film. I'm sorry. If the movie is not about the fashion, I can't. I, I love this movie because it was a fashion movie. I was having so much freaking freaking fun with it, okay? But Maleficent is from Sleeping Beauty, one of my favorite movies of all time. If you follow me on Letterboxd, you know it is one of my top four movies of all time. And Corella is from 101 Dalmatians. Now, people have always cared a bit more about the story of Sleeping Beauty than they have about 101 Dalmatians. Just because I personally think it's a better story and a lot of other people think it too. Megan is texting me. I love Megan, but I'm sorry. Let me mute my phone. Love Megan. Had to mute my phone. But like I said, what was I talking about? Yeah, more people just take the story of Sleeping Beauty thing more seriously than 101 Dalmatians because 101 Dalmatians is a bit goofy if we're being real. I'm gonna have a whole entire video just talking about that movie and I'm probably am gonna put it on the main channel instead of Patreon because I have a lot of thoughts and opinions about that film. But anyway, like I said, these Disney movies, these Disney villain movies feel like fan fiction. That's literally what it feels like when I watch these films. They just feel like big budgeted fan fictions and that is kind of what they are to a certain extent. Like, these movies are just meant to give backstory to the villains in Disney movies to explain why they are the bad guy Chun-Li. And 9 times out of 10, it's always going to be something tragic when Disney continues to make more of these movies because you know they will because you know we keep going to see them. It's always going to be something extremely tragic, okay? It, okay, okay. And the thing about it is when they make these movies is that they change the story up a bit. They change the story up a bit. Like I said, we got a backstory for Maleficent, you know, before she had the demon child who is Malbertha. We don't speak of her. We don't speak of that girl. Okay, we do speak of that girl. I speak on her name all the time. But anyway, anyway, like I said, she fell in love with a man named Stefan and then he betrayed her. Instead of him killing her like he was supposed to do, he ripped her wings off without her consent while she was asleep. Yeah, that part of the movie actually made me very, very angry. Like, I had to pause it for a moment and just kind of sit down and just be like, really, Disney? Really? That hurt. That really, really freaking hurt, like I said. That's what happened with Maleficent. Now what happened with Corella? Please do not bombard my comment section with this. I already know what it is. I'm probably going to go ahead and filter some words out. No! Her mother was not killed by dogs. And the way it sounds, like, it's not exactly how it was. Basically, her biological mother killed her adoptive mother because her biological mother forced her adopted mother to take her because she didn't want to raise her. Next thing you know, they come back to her house. She's asking for some financial support because you dead ass just forced this woman to take care of your kid. And then she ordered her Dalmatian dogs to push her off the cliff. That's what happened, y'all. I'm gonna need a lot of y'all to just actually look into the stuff that y'all see on the internet because everybody was just running with the subject, oh, she was killed by dogs. That's stupid. I'm like, no, nah, y'all. If y'all actually saw it, it makes a lot more sense. Her, oh God, I wanted to fight her adopted mom. Not her adopted mom, she was super sweet. Her bio mom, so bad. Anyway, we're getting off topic, okay? We're getting off topic. Now, those are their two villain origin stories. By the way, you know, we all know Maleficent's, you know, villain origin story. Corella's villain origin story really didn't make sense because I'm like, I get why she was evil because, you know, she ended up getting back at her birth mother by not forging, staging her death so it looked as if she killed her. 
No, that still doesn't explain why Corella wanted to kill dogs, but um, because it's so weird because she actually liked the Dalmatians. I don't know. It's a lot about this film that just don't make sense. I enjoyed it. Didn't it make sense? No. And Maleficent, we know why as she was not invited to Aurora's christening. So these movies kind of defeat the purpose of why we like villains in the first place we like villains because they are bad we love them because they're bad i consider maleficent and corella de Vil to be two of disney's best villains like it makes sense why they were two of the main villain parents in the descendants movies y'all know descendants talk was gonna come up don't act like you didn't know Anyway, let's go back into the thumbnail. Not the thumbnail, the freaking outline that I have sitting in here. The reason we like villains in fiction is because they're bad. Not everybody needs to be redeemable. Not everybody needs a redemption arc. We don't need to feel bad for everyone. If I wanted to go feel bad for a murderer, I would have went and watched the freaking idea the investigation discovery channel, okay? I would have went and watched my friend Dahmer again, which I'm never watching ever again because that was just cringe horror. But what made these two villains great is because we knew nothing about them. That's what made them so great in the movies because we didn't want to root for them at all. We just like seeing bad people be the bad guy Chun Li. Okay, okay. As I have mentioned before, Sleeping Beauty is one of my top four favorite movies of all time. And I didn't dislike Maleficent in this movie at all. Like the Maleficent movie and in Sleeping Beauty, I didn't care for her because I knew nothing about her. I just thought she was just being petty because she really had it out for a child. That's the reason why it was so easy to dislike Maleficent. She was just bad. She was just bad. And we disliked her, but we liked her at the same time. We don't like how she was trying to harm a child, but we liked how she was just bad and she was very, very good at it. Like, that's a big problem that Disney has a lot now with their villains is that they're not good at being bad. And I find that so freaking weird, like I said. It ruined the story of Sleeping Beauty for me because I feel bad for her now. I don't like the fact that I feel bad for this woman. I really dislike it. And I had a much better time viewing the movie when I didn't care about why she was the way she was. I seen Sleeping Beauty numerous times before I watched Maleficent. I did not watch Maleficent until a year after it came out when it was on like, you know, HBO one day or whatever and I just was able to catch it. And I just had to sit for a moment and be like, this kind of ruined the original for me like I'm not trying to say it ruined it for me because the original was always going to be there but now when I see Maleficent I think of this just sad broken woman and that's exactly why she turned out to be the way she was she was just hurt and I, I get that I get the thing about being hurt and the main reason why I don't think these movies work is because they're making us feel bad for bad people. These movies don't work simply for that reason. I don't like the fact that I feel bad for a woman that tried to kill a bunch of dogs. I don't like the fact that I feel bad for a woman that had it out for a freaking baby and then was still keeping that grudge for 15 freaking years. I especially don't even want to think about if Mother Gothel ever got her movie. Like I said earlier, she kidnapped a child there's literally no excuse for doing that like I don't think these movies work because of that do I think they're fun movies yes because you can tell that they have a lot of fun and creativity when they go into them like just look at these movies they're extremely beautiful to watch but stop trying to make me feel bad for bad people um like I said what these women did was unacceptable and that I just was like do y'all not realize how stupid y'all sound that's the main reason why I did that skit in the first place you would literally give someone who kidnapped a child a redemption arc and you want me to feel bad for somebody like that. Like I even mentioned how in Aladdin, like Jafar is a freaking pedo, okay? Jafar is freaking horrible. Don't make me feel bad for that, man. I freaking refuse. Do not. Next thing you know, the evil queen might get a redemption arc and whatever. Don't make me feel bad for this woman trying to kill a 14-year-old girl. Y'all, do y'all get it? Y'all get it. Next thing you know, they're going to give Star a backstory, okay? If they do want to make another Lion King movie about the Lion King universe, you know what? I wouldn't mind watching the Scar movie. 
I wouldn't mind watching a Scar movie. If I get another Killer Beyonce soundtrack out of another Lion King film, so be it. Give us the Scar film. Try to make me feel bad for that man, but I never will. I never will. You know what? No, don't don't speak too soon. You might actually feel bad for him. You might actually feel bad for him. Like I refuse. And the way I felt watching Corella because. Maleficent, I didn't really feel all this way until like recently when I gave the movie a rewatch. The way I felt with Corella is how I felt with Tulip and Infinity Train. By the way, if you ain't seen Infinity Train, I'm about to spoil it. Infinity Train season one specifically. Um, Tulip finds out that the conductor, you know, has a very, very tragic backstory. And Tulip got extremely mad because she was like, why are you trying to make me feel bad for a horrible person? Now that I know why she is the way she is, I feel bad for her. And the thing about it is that that lady was terrible. And kudos to Tulip for helping her because I don't even know if I would have did it. I probably would have too after that freaking cat made me feel bad for her. It's just frustrating. Like... Just because somebody had something very, very sad happen to them in the past, it does not give them an excuse to hurt and harm others. That's the thing about it. That's what I just wish people would understand when they decide to keep making movies like this. Like, they're bad for a freaking reason, okay? They're awful for a freaking reason. And I read fan fiction like this all the time where it's certain characters where I felt like they could have been developed a little bit more. And a lot of times those characters be villains. I will go and read a good fan fiction, but sometimes you really just don't need to develop a villain anymore. We just need to know that they're bad and they just have it out for the main character sometimes. And that's it. We don't need all this extra stuff and that's okay. We didn't really need much of a backstory for Corella DeVille. And it didn't work because so much stuff was not making sense also. Like one, like with Maleficent, a lot of stuff wasn't making sense. And two, it wasn't making sense in Corella either. It's just, not only are they making me feel bad for bad people, but a lot of the stuff in these films just are confusing as hell. But you know what? I enjoy them. That's the, that's the thing. At the end of the day, I enjoy the movie. I enjoy the movie. They're not freaking terrible like everybody tries to make them out to be. Like, you know, you can tell people put a lot of hard work into these. Sometimes it's, a lot of stuff just don't be executed well. And that's all okay. right. That's all right. You win some, you lose some. Y'all act like every little last thing y'all watch is perfect. There is literally flaws in everything y'all watch. Don't even get me started. Don't even get me started. Also, like, just one little point. This is just kind of like a real personal one right here. I really don't like a lot of these. Not every... Like, Princess Weeks made a really, really good video about, like, how not everyone needs a redemption arc. I'm going to have her video linked down below because... But anyway... It's frustrating because people always feel the need that every single last character out here deserves a redemption arc. That's part of the reason why I was like so irritated with the Avatar The Last Airbender fandom when I was going off about how I didn't like Azula and things like that. And everybody was just trying to tell me reasons why I should like her. And they kept trying to point out all the her redeemable qualities and whatever. And like at the end of the day, I don't care how redeemable a villain is because what they did was unacceptable. That's one thing a lot of people just did not want to hear me out on when it came to Azula. I don't care that the girl went through a lot with her family. Her trying to hurt others should not have happened. And it was, ooh, don't, don't get me started. Don't get me started. Like I understand hurt people hurt people, but y'all gotta learn how to break this endless cycle of hurting people. If I were to go out and hurt a whole bunch of people because I have been hurt my entire life, I would be a really, really terrible person. And I would not be here with you guys. I'd probably be in, I probably would have been in juvie my whole high school, middle school. And then I probably would be locked up right now. Okay. If that's because you're hurt doesn't mean you can hurt people. I'm sorry. That's just that's just my opinion right there. And I don't know. It, it's just frustrating. It gives like the audience a chance to like, you know what? Nah. Nah. Fandom culture sucks. Stan culture sucks. You guys are annoying. Stop harassing people over fictional characters that wouldn't even look your way in real life. Anyway, that is the conclusion to my video. If you like this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and consider joining the Patreon. I have four tiers. 
I always had this big habit of doing this. Every time I try to lift up two, three, or four fingers, I always lift up the wrong fingers. And that's been a really, really bad habit since I was little. But like I said, I have four tiers. I gotta correct the time. The cheapest is a dollar. You get access to the Discord and early access to my videos. It's a lot of fun over there. Please join if you can. I have merch. Please go and shop if you want. I really, really appreciate it. Follow me on everything at HeyRihanna. Love you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching and have a good night. Powerpuff girls will just blow your mind. Buttercup by villains three at a time. Bubbles will smile while kicking your butt. And Blossom will leave them out of their rug. Cherish and Powerpuff, two of a kind. Both want to save the world before bad times. From Townsville, Memphis, New York to LA. The Powerpuff girls are just here to stay.